What we want to do tonight is really put forward to you the proposals for the Hayes Wharf area that have been organised by the London Docklands Development Corporation and the St Martin's Property Company. Because this is probably one of the few occasions that you as local people would have a chance to make any comment on this scheme. I can probably hear somebody saying we've been here before. It's worth going back a few years. And when I was thinking about tonight's meeting, I can remember thinking when the Hayes Wharf issue first hit television some 10 years ago. And uh, I remember Dan Crawley, who lived on the, the Bethel estate, being interviewed. And in one phrase, he really said, I think, what the issue is in front of us tonight. He said, Bob Mellish said, this is the biggest opportunity since the fire of London. And he was standing on the corner of Bethel Estate balcony, and those of you know it, it's just opposite uh, the Tower of London. And he said, the biggest opportunity for who? Is it for us? Or is it for other people over there? And he pointed over to the city of London. And that really is the issue in front of us now. And we can't duck that. Now, we are faced with a situation where we get a letter, as we have done now, and we have a month to respond. <coughs> On all the information we have, based on what we've found out and talked about and planned and consulted and, and, and what we can analyse as the needs of this area, the proposals do not meet what we, our view as public authorities, do not meet the needs of this area. We are calling a meeting to put that view in front of you. If you want to hear another view, then frankly I think you have to go and either talk to the LBC or criticise them for not holding a public meeting. But I don't think you should criticise us for not having the only one sitting here on the fat one tonight. Thank you for following me, Mr Chairman, of the North South Community Development Group. And most of you know about the group, and we've been operating for 10 years. And uh, we've had, uh, we've been in operation while there's been councils we didn't like and GLCs we didn't like. But, They've always consulted us on issues, on planning matters, always. Always let us know what was going on. You have that right to know what's going on, even when you don't like the authority. In this case, they've never even communicated with us, the GFDL, the London Dock and Development Corporation. I suggest we have an embankment. I have a chamber, chamber crossing there. Yeah. 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 Right down the river. And the gardens all along that river and build what they love behind because us old this park, they got to sit in St John's Park, which is God's waiting room. If that was a lovely gardens, which we deserve in this park, because we are from a lovely bomb acting from the war. You're far more likely to get a decent walkway within side Tony Street through the development of the housing projects through the development of the needs of local people than you are through the needs of business, through offices or whatever. You are far more likely to get an understanding of the needs to try to attract small businesses back based upon local communities' needs than you are through dealing through office developments or indeed the question of the uh, people inside the city. Now, is it the policy that the Londoner as we understand it, as well as shift house and move out on the basis of, uh, you know, trying to get some sort of decent housing facilities, decent flats or whatever, and therefore we create a wasteland whereby people come at 9 o'clock in the morning and go home at 5 o'clock in the evening. I remember Tooley Street at one particular time when you couldn't move down there for people that worked in the area, that lived in the area. As far as the transport and general construction work is concerned, if this public meeting this evening <coughs> takes a decision to fight for, with all the difficulties that is there, on the question of developing Tooley Street into a community centre as opposed to an office centre, we will support them. Bearing in mind that the democratic process, as has been pointed out, has been well and truly Shrive over on the basis of the people that matter, the people that you elected. Wait till their money runs out and they're organised, or their little bit, what they do get from the LDDC. Wait till that runs out and see who they're crying to then. Thank you. <laughs>
And there's a place at Summit Bridge where there's an office development that's been going ahead. And all it's got at the moment is the foundations. And they've left the site. They've just left it clear and it's derelict. Now, I want to know if the Secretary of State gives permission on this site, and it's only one application that's been put in, does that mean that they can knock down almost all of the site, build one set of foundations, and leave the less derelict until they've got enough money to build it in the future. The other question I want to ask is, is there actually any guarantee that there will be housing? Is there any guarantee that there will be housing of any sort on this development? They're looking at this as a way of investing their money, securing their money within a secure country. This is what they're holding us. Simple as that. Now, what they want to do with that land, you know, doesn't really matter. They would build anything once they have it. The money is there, it's our money. It's building bloody great net west buildings over there, which you can see from wherever you happen to be in London, you can see it. Our money is there. Our pension money. In fact, I mean, frankly, we don't own it, we're going to bloody well buy it at some stage, whether it's by legitimate means or. or, 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 or. <laughs> There is another power that the council does have, which is to make its own plans. Uh, and in the case of the current site that's been talked about, the, the power of that was seen because the council decided that it wanted to designate the Courage's Botley site, not for offices, but for housing with some industry. And the result of that was that a site which was put on the market at over £6 million pounds was bought by the GLC at two and a half million pounds. And that is primarily because of the powers of planning controls. But the proposal that's been put forward by the Dockland Corporation is probably the largest piece of property speculation that London has ever seen. For this reason, it is because there is no prospect that this scheme that's been put forward, which amounts to 14 cent points, will ever be built. They know it won't be built because there's no demand for it. But the property speculation comes in here, is if they can get a planning permission from the Secretary of State on June the 8th or June the 9th or whenever it is, is the deadline for this, the value of that land, all 23 acres, will go up by about between six and 10 times. Just by the fact that the Secretary of State says, I grant you language. Yeah. There is no commitment whatever to build, there is no commitment to provide any of the community facilities that are at the fag end of the development. It is simply a gigantic piece of property speculation which the law currently allows and that the Dockton Corporation is making possible. And that is why, as a matter of principle, we must say no. Even though we don't have an immediate alternative, because if we don't say no loudly, what we're really allowing them to do is to, to, to rip off the most gigantic piece of undeserved profit that almost any private company has ever made from property development in London. First item to be forward is that the is that we reject this meeting rejects the current scheme, which is this one that's been put up before you here, as not meeting the needs and requirements of the area. Right. The second one is that me calls for public inquiry into the proposals. And the third one is that it rejects the use of the special development order procedure, which has been outlined earlier on both by myself and by Matt Gates, as a means of granting planning permission. And the fourth one is that you support the suggestions being put forward in the North Southwark District Plan, which we're saying is coming up in consultation with some which primarily allocate this site for housing, and industry, and sort of open space and this type of thing. Those are the four broad proposals. Are people clear on that now? Okay, can I have that show of hands again for those proposals? Okay. That's the water. That's good. Uh, you can um, leave. He's making he's, he's kind of the fish.
Yeah. Nothing round here, four children under the age of three, until they get to three, when they go to the state-run nurseries, and even then they're only there for half a day, five days a week. Whereas here, we're open at the moment for three days a week, four days, and hopefully next year we'll be open for five days a week. Initially, there was five, eight of us, eight mothers got together. Now there's 15 kids, and I think there's about 10, 12, 12 mothers. And if we can't get back in at the end of this year, we may have to close the nursery, but we don't want to because, like I said, there's nothing around here for the children that we cater for, the under threes, between the ages of six months and three years. And uh, there are, I mean, I was speaking to a woman the other week, and she said to, said to me that when she had children, when, like my age group, when I was a child, we didn't have anything like nurseries, but like I said to her, then the kids could, could play out in the middle of the street, no one could, you know, they wouldn't get hurt. Whereas now, I mean, if you let a kid out in the street round here, they're more than likely to get run over by a bus as much as anything else. And this is the only outside space they have left? Yeah. Apart from the parks. I mean, and over there, they're not allowed to play with the balls or play, foot, play on the grass with bikes and things. So, I mean, they're... You know, I mean, this is it. This is their playground. You must have uh, some hopes about expansion. Oh yeah, well there's a shed out through the back there that we've got our eye on to take over and clear out and use as the nursery because we've only got the room upstairs on a year, yearly basis, as from January this year till January of 1984. It looks a bit damp though, that wall there. And it'd need a guttering put up. Well, it only needs pointing, that corner. Yeah. Maybe the one's It looks perfectly sound, doesn't it? Oh, it looks fairly safe. Still looking and being is two different things, oh, isn't yeah. it? I mean, we've got to wait for permission we for could everything. We could have it surveyed, couldn't we? Hey? We could have it surveyed. True. It wouldn't cost much for that. I thought it was worth it in the long run. Mm. I mean, obviously, we'd have to prove that it was safe before the council. Yeah, all I mean, we've proven that there. there is a need around here for the nursery, so we should get help towards finding yeah. accommodation. Because really, we want to go five days, don't we? Yeah. And we can't use that hall for five days. No, because, because the old age pensioners use it Monday for their bingo yeah. in the afternoon, and it's got other uses. And we can use it between 9.30 and 3.30, can't we, for the kids? It's for the three days, yeah. which isn't really enough. Because no. then we could split the week and have half the children in on one week. We could but take more children then. We could, yeah. Extend their numbers. We've got to prove, we feel, we've really got to prove that it can work before mm. we're going to get any aid for next year. Yeah. If we can't really prove that we're going to work in this next six months, then the grant just won't be there next year and we're failed. Mm. And then we'll all be stuck. There'll be nothing yeah. at all. I mean, being the only parent-managed group in nursery in Bermondsey, there'd be nothing at all. And if we fold, then they're not going to give money to other people. I don't think we've got to really prove that someone can do it before they'll give the money to other people to do it. Yeah. I mean, I never realised that just how expensive it was to run a nursery. And that's the honest truth. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was just a simple case of bring them in, leave them, and that's it. But it's not when it's a hell of a lot of organisation in the nursery business. We've got to organise everything from what they're going to eat today to next week, at where the money's coming from. We've got to organise things like the staff, what they're working, in, what work they're going to do. I mean, the staff do organise their own day, but you know they're responsible to us in the finish of it all, aren't they?
We're standing on the roof of Courage's Brewery Old Site by Southwark Bridge. This site's been cleared now for over a year and employed many local people in bottling. Um, many jobs were lost from this site. The GLC recently bought this site, seven and a half acre site, to build homes, new homes for people in North Southwark and to build industrial units for people that need that kind of work in North Southwark. This is, uh, this is a move from the GLC to stimulate these kind of uses in North Southwark that's very much in demand by the local community. The community areas policy is not the culmination but it's the beginning of a struggle that started 10 years uh, by groups like the North Southern Community Development Group. I'm the chairman of that group. We started this struggle 10 years to try to reverse policies that develop in North Southern in a way that met the local people's needs. That battle has lasted 10 years. We've been fighting the GLC when it was Tory. We've been fighting the Secretary of State for the Environment, that's both Labour and Tory, and we've been fighting the previous Labour administration in Southern. This one, fortunately, is different, and the GLC is, uh, administration is different at this moment in time. Both see the need to develop this North Southern for the benefits of local people, and I'll reiterate, housing for local people, industrial jobs, open space, and shopping facilities. That's the criteria we need to meet under this community areas policy. Right. And it's taken us a long time to get there. Now the North Southern Community Development Group, you just said you're the chair, you're the chair of that group. Can you say what that is and what, yeah. what groups are involved in that? Yes, the North Southern Community Development Group is an umbrella group for tennis association, adventure playgrounds, voluntary settlements, Trades Council, I'll uh, spell it out, Southern Trades Council are affiliated to the group and Bermondsey Trades Council are affiliated to the group and many few tenants associations and others. I think the groups affiliated to the North Southern number about 25. The group was formed in 92 and it was formed out of the need for local people to take issue with the planning policies. Uh, those planning policies wanted to develop North Southwark and particularly these vital important sites. It wanted to develop them uh, with an emphasis on office users. Now the community it was very aware uh, that uh, there were other things much more needed in this part of the world. Uh, needs of housing and uh, industrial jobs. We'd already lost a lot of the uses of the docking and, and the jobs that went with it. So this jobs were a vital factor, as was housing and new housing that met local needs and local standards in 1972. You know we're an action group and uh, we try to put right the wrongs that are happening to pensioners and to uh, try and jog different people into giving us what we think we're entitled to. But at the moment this group is uh, campaigning against parking on pavements and also the damage that is being done to pavements. It's a sort of two-edged thing. If we can uh, stop the parking on pavements and prevent the number of accidents that are happening to people who are infirm or blind. So something's got to be done and something serious to jog them into some action. Well, we propose in the very near future to submit to the council a list, a pretty comprehensive list, with photographs of where these things are happening throughout the area of North Southwark, which we are mainly concerned with. And the telephones, we think that they stand in charge on the telephones. Pensioners wouldn't even mind, I don't think, paying half the stand in charge. But at the moment, my bill alone for the amount of calls that I make cost me 30 pence each for a call because the standing charge is 13, over 13 pound and as for VAT, well I think that is ridiculous because you can't tell me that a telephone is a luxury. It's a necessity for old people and I think all old people should have one to keep them in touch with their doctor, with neighbours, with friends and with relations. 
say that I would like to see the television tax abolished for senior citizens because in this day and age there's many senior citizens who live alone and they can't go out at night because they're afraid of mugging so it's a very very long evening and it's a long winter too. Us old pensioners are the forgotten people. Tell they done something for us. That's my lot. Well, you could, You're the forgotten you race. Yeah, well that's true. 80 and over. Yeah. I think that. What? We're going to have snacks, cups of tea, cups of coffee, and people that pop in, uh, we're hoping to have a lounge, a television lounge, where they can sit, nice easy armchairs, books to read, and uh, through this we hope that people will, you know, get together more. Mm. not spend so much time in their homes where they can be very lonely mm. so this again is more a social thing but we have approached the GLC for a grant and it depends on this grant whether we can open a popping parlour but again we've got to get people involved that will help because it won't run itself we must have people who are active members people, old people if they're confined, they're dependent on the little back street shops. Mm. And they've got to pay through the nose well, for it. Yeah. Yeah. So the purchasing power of their meagre pension is cut even more, oh, isn't yes, it? Yeah. So we could supply them a few things <laughs> from our popping parlour. It mm. would, you know, help mm. a bit. We're about 15, 15 strong at the moment. So that's an improvement on when we started. I think we started with about seven or eight, didn't we? So we are gradually strengthening. We are representative of a lot of people now, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's only... Yes, but why not uh, try and uh, get down to the people and tell them a bit more about it? We well, did try. Tell them we can't do that. We've got oh. a meeting. Oh. Yes, but they, I mean, I'll tell all the pensioners around here what I hear about it. Yeah. But, I mean, they don't know nothing about this place. We yes. don't find it. Well, we have pump, we have give pamphlets mm -hmm. out, but you know we haven't got the funds mm -hmm. to go around and sort of canvas yeah. yeah. or publicise ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we're dependent on our meetings. On you spreading the word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whenever we write letters or we go anywhere and we say we're North Bag, oh, we know you. We've mm -hmm. heard about you. Mm -hmm. So really, people are becoming aware mm -hmm. of us. Oh. Maybe we're a soul in the flesh to <laughs> some people, but we are becoming known, and we yeah. hope that you know we will become yeah. bigger, yeah. And stronger. Yeah. Yeah. The Tabards had the Tenants Association for a good few years. Um, I think it goes back to 1950 something. This hall that we've got now was put up by the old LCC during the war when there was a hall here before that was bombed. Everybody on the Tabard estate is a member of the Tenants Association. The, whether they pay us every person, every family is a member of the Tenants Association. Um, every Tenants Association in the Bermondsey district, well all six districts in Southwark, have a district housing committee. We meet to discuss things that will benefit the whole of the district that you live in. Bermondsey Housing District is the biggest district. But if a tenant comes to the Tenants Association and says, oh, my toilet won't flush, it hasn't flushed for two weeks, I usually go to the area superintendent to see that the order's gone in, and then I ring up. Graham Lovell, who's the maintenance manager, and say, I usually joke with him, you short of plumbing work, well, will you come over and do so-and-so's toilet, and it's done. As I say, we do have a good relationship with the works department. Um, we, I still think there should be, a, uh, there's room for a lot of improvement on the glaziers part. Also, the electricians and the roofing. Uh, that we have to wait weeks, even months, for those repairs to be done. Why, why do you think that is? I don't think they've got enough staff. That there should be more staff. Um, the last time we heard was that there was one glazier to do six areas. The gardens are a disgrace. 
plus the trees. The, the trees are never locked. Some blocks have got big trees outside that's blocking their light and they have to have their electric light on all day in the summer to see. Although we've spoken to the gardeners, we don't seem to have much success. We have written a letter to the egg place to see whether we can get some improvement. Our football pitch is our pride and joy. <laughs> um, I was the one who signed the papers to get the money off the GLC for Tabar Gardens to be renovated, to be brought up to standard. And we, I, we was the ones who suggested the football pitch because we thought the boys play football in the courtyards, they annoy the old people, they annoy the people who've got the young children. The pitch is going to be let in two hour blocks. There was talk well, they did ask me how much Tabard Tenants Association were prepared to pay to use the football pitch. And I said, no way. We got the money and we was entitled to play on it. Can you say a bit more about the problems of car parking that you mentioned earlier on? Yes. We have, <laughs> we've had a car parking problem on this estate and around the estate, the road, for a good few years. Um, as far as we know, the police sent a report through to Scotland Yard, who sent it through to the council, uh, but as yet, nothing has been done, been done. We have asked that the roads around the estate, because they're so narrow, that car parking should only be allowed on one side of the road, and the other side kept free. The post office are the main offenders. From half past five in the morning, our roads on this estate are full of parked cars. They don't only park them in the road, they park them halfway on the pavement. Plus they park them in our courtyards. In some blocks, especially over Betcham House and Northfleet, some tenants can't even get through into the porchway to get their prams in because the way the car, you know, illegal car parking is there. The caretakers have tried to clear, you say, by putting tickets on them, but all you get is abuse from the people. We need help from Southwark Highways to do something about the car parking. At the District Housing Committee, Tabard Estate, um, if Southwark brings wall clamps in, it's going to be the pilot estate for that scheme to try and cut down the car parking on the estate. Um, I think you run social events. Yeah, can you tell us about them? Yes, we run discos for the children. We run bingo Mondays and Thursday nights, which lots of people from all over the area come to. We run an old people's club, a youth club, and a girls club. Plus, we're going to start a mother and toddlers group and a community nursery. And we're hoping to do keep fit for the young teenagers.